What's going on everybody? Today we're going to talk about Ned Rig fishing for deep water smallmouth and a lot of secrets that a lot of people won't talk about. So I hope everyone enjoys this. We're going to cover four topics today. Rod, reel, line, leader, baits, jig head types, and how to fish it. So Hopefully you uh, watch all the way through this and take away a few tips and tricks for catching deep water smallmouth and enjoy. All right, first, let's talk about the rod and reel setup that I use here. When fishing deep water net rigs for smallmouth, big smallmouth here, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, the Great Lakes, wherever you are targeting deep water smallmouth, I like a longer rod. This is a seven foot four, so seven four four XF. This is a Douglas X Matrix rod in super light, paired with a twenty five hundred or a three thousand size Tatula spinning reel. Right now, I have a twenty five hundred on here, with a ten pound uh, Seaguard Smackdown braid in green, and then eight pound Gamma Edge fluoro. One of the most important things and underlooked things when it comes to dragging a net rig is the rod length and I feel like this is a very important deal because when you're dragging long distances we call it long lining the net um, when you're long lining the net rig at a far distance when that fish eats it a lot of times the rod just gets heavy with this seven foot four you can reel really fast and lean into them and it's going to hook them real quick as that extra fast tip and then also absorb the impact when you set those in the fish poles the rod is going to absorb it down here through the midsection of the lower quarter of the rod. That also allows you to fish a lighter line like a six or eight pound test. Um, I don't think anybody should drag a net rig with anything less than a seven foot four rod just because of the length deal when you're long lining. If you're just dropping on, I'm sure you can go with a lighter rod or if you're using a lighter head. But I personally like this rod because it is rated three eighth ounce to one ounce for the jig heads. And you'll know why if you continue watching this video as I go through the terminal tackle side, why I like this longer rod. All right, let's dive down here into the meat and potatoes. Not the lures yet um, or the baits that we'd be using. These what we're going to talk about here is the jig heads. So what you'll notice is in here when I turn around you'll see some jig heads with bait keepers, some lead keepers, and then even a screw line. And I'll kind of tell you what baits work well with each one as you go here. So this is my fancy dancy lure lock box, a small one, so a six compartment. I put the dividers here in the middle. So here is a quarter ounce with a wire keeper. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can really well. This is a 3 16th ounce with a wire keeper. And I'll get into it here in a minute why I like each one. This one here is a 5 16th with a lead keeper. So you'll see the two prongs. That's the lead keeper. Now we have a 5 16th with a screw lock. And also a 3 8. Oh, that one's better. I don't know why that one went back in. A 3 8 with a screw lock. So, and then another one that I don't have in this box or in my swim bait box, and I will do depending on how rocky the situation is, is an owner football head in quarter or 3 8 with the 53 13 hook. That's one important. Uh, topic here too, or insert, is every one of my net heads besides that football head are custom board and they use the owner 5313 hook. It's one of the sharpest hooks on the market. It pins them perfectly every time. I almost don't lose fish with these hooks. I Hopefully I don't jinx myself with that. But um, next we're going to talk about some of the baits that we will use for each type of jig head and why. Alright everyone. So. Next, we are on to baits, which is one of the most important things when it comes to net rigging. There's five to six different baits that you can really use that will help you catch more fish. I have a handful of ones here that I've tried in certain situations that have worked really well and that I truly believe in and that I think will help you guys. Any one of my guide clients that come on my boat and are dragging net rigs, 
depending on the time of year or um, current related or how big the surface so waves lake erie tends to be very rough on my end of the lake so these are all situation or if they want something bigger or smaller so let's get into let's rank them from my least favorite to most favorite so starting off my least favorite one even though it does get bit when there is a ton of current and we're drifting really fast i'll go to like that three eighth ounce football head which a lot of people don't want you to know about and i'll put on the strike king cutter worm which is the dead rig bait it's a little like three and a half maybe four inch it's actually three inches and i like to carry a couple packs with such a situational bait and you'll notice that on the tail there it's cut because the cutter worm it's a baby it's basically the baby brother or sister of the, the bigger cutter worm so what we'll do is i will rig it actually tail side up so that water pushes through and causes it to vibrate and that'll actually help slow it down it, it'll raise your bait up a little bit but on a very good controlled drift it's just something a little different that the smallies don't see all the time All right, my second least favorite bait, Guggen Baits Rattling Net. They're good, they have a time and place. Uh, they have, the cool little thing is they did something a little different with it. It has a rattling, a rattle inserted inside of the soft plastic mold. So when it's coming through that water and you're whatever twitching it, you can hear it just rattle ever so slightly. That might help you get more bites. I haven't quite figured it out. I have noticed on some days when the bite is tough, I can get an extra bite or two with this. So when I do know it's a net rig bite and I have all my rods rigged up to be that way, this will definitely be on one of those rods because it might be that extra bite getter. All right, now we're getting into the middle section, right? So a very underrated, Ned rig worm for deep water smallmouth is going to be the robo worm. The robo worm Ned worm. Three inches, it's got some ribs, so as it's kind of flowing through water. The idea is for it to create like a bubble trail as it's coming through with that rib body style. That's a good little bait. I've caught a lot of big fish with it. It's not my go to, but I do prefer it over the two that I just mentioned. Next. Is the Gary Yamamoto Fat Sanko. The one thing that you will notice here, all the baits that I choose are relatively in that green pumpkin sphere. That's because gobies tend to be brown, creamy, just clear, weird, white colored belly, sometimes black. So green pumpkin, black, black. Uh, watermelon isn't my favorite nut drink color, that's why this bag, pack is full. Next bait, this one's cool. They're hand poured out of Washington. WFO worms, they make it fantastic Ned bait. This is called the Slaying Stick. This color is baby bass. And I really like this one, especially when we infuse it with a little bit of goby oil, which is a sneaky little good product right here, goby oil. So this one has a brown green pumpkin top and then like a lemon chartreuse translucent belly to it it's a fish catcher i've caught a lot of fish with it so far this spring um relatively soft has a lot of action you'll notice that the mold is kind of similar to like the z-man but it's not the same kind of plastic it's more of a dense plastic out in washington they can't really scent their baits and scent is huge to me so i make sure i always scent everything up once i receive it from them but vicky and scott make an awesome bait make sure you definitely check these out they are my second or third favorite ned rig bait if not first depending on the day so these last three are interchangeable really and the last two of the interchangeable baits here i was talking about number one and two would be the finesse turd trd or the big turd so depending on the forage size one is three inches, like two and three quarters, and the other one is four. They're both great baits. I like to have one tied on each rod to see what the fish are actually focused on during that day. 
Uh, the cool little side note for this is they are stretchy, so one thing that people forget to do is kind of elastic them out and snap them back together before threading them onto the hook. So now, if you've made it this far in the video, make sure you tune in here for the last part because we're going to talk about which baits go on which jig heads and then um, a secret little sneaky technique that I use with my Ned rig that just isn't dragging so you want to stay tuned for that. Alright, on to the last part here before we get into one of the secrets that people don't want to know. Actually, these, all these are a little bit of secrets that I hold near and dear to my heart. I feel like they help me get more bites and my clients more bites over a lot of people who drag Ned rigs on Lake Erie or on any of the Great Lakes. So first, kind of let's break down why I choose each jig head and what for. So, when we go down to the standard, just basic mushroom head style jig head with the wire keeper here on the bottom, the 5313 hook here. This is uh, one that I'm going to use for my super, super soft plastics. So I like this for the Gary Yamamoto Fat Senko because it's not going to tear the bait up too bad and you're able to get more fish out of it. Next, the lead keeper. The lead keeper is great for just about any general purpose. I always use the lead keeper in the 516 size because it's the only way I can get them. Also works really great with your subtle, super salty plastics like the Fat Senko. Not so good for the Z-Man that you want more of a single wire keeper or the next big secret here that we're getting to here shortly, which is the wire, the, the screw lock wire keeper, which is hands down my favorite thing. I am so happy that a couple of my really close buddies showed me this um, and it has saved me a lot of time, a lot of money on baits. So with the wire keeper here, I'm going to take, let's take um, the Canada Craw Big Turn here. So as I aforementioned here a minute ago, kind of elastic it out now one of the biggest secrets here is the when you rig it up so here we have our 516 screw lock you find the top of the bait which would be your green pumpkin with the watermelon belly you want to measure it up here to figure out where that hook should come out so just before the bubbly ribs so I've stretched it out stretch it out here one more time for good measure now the one thing that I always recommend when using the screw lock is do not tie it onto your line first. It kind of becomes a huge pain in the butt to get the bait on. So let's hope I don't screw this up here, rigging it up. The Z-Man Plastic is kind of a funky one to mess with because it easily messes up. So now that you see the bait is just tangling there, you figure out which way your screw lock is going and you kind of just work the bait on there like so. trick that you can do. You can get your fingers to work. So it stays extra better is I'll pinch it and move it up over top of the eye like that before tying it on. That keeps it a little more on that hook sturdy. This isn't my best rig job that I've ever done. It's a little crooked but this will help keep your bait on there. It's not going to slide down that screw lock all too much fish are really gonna like the natural presentation of that. I wish I would have rigged it a little better, but you know, we're just kind of doing it on the fly here. Okay, now on the way to fish a long drag heavy net. So on here now I have a 3 8 ounce screw lock. Head. Yes, 3 8 surprising, right? It's heavy. And you'll see the WFO slaying stick, which is their three inch net bait in that baby bass. So the reason why I like that really long rod when you're dragging 70 to 100 to 120 feet away, the old school cracking a tube technique. So what I'll do is I'll actually cast it out about 30 feet and I'll open my bail and let it sit to the ground. As soon as it makes contact where I think there's fish at, if they're in like a lousy mood or they're really active, I will crack it and reel two to three times. And then as soon as I'm done reeling, I will flip the bail open because that bait's gonna come up six, seven feet in the water column because of the seven foot rod, seven foot four rod. When you open that bail because it's such a heavy head, it's gonna 
create a reaction strike because that bait is going to drop straight down, hopefully right into a fish's face. And what you'll notice at that point is when you close your bail and you go to drag for a couple seconds or crack it again, you'll never feel them bite it, but when you go to crack them, the rod will actually get ripped out of your hand because you're going to crack with a loosey-goosey wrist and you're going to feel that rod just double up. Sometimes it's a rock because you're dropping it right into a boulder mine field, but when you crack that Ned rig real hard, just like while reeling and then cracking that bale open and let it slam into the bottom, it just creates that reaction by the small mouth you cannot resist it. So that's the biggest secret that a lot of people don't tell you about with the Ned rig is everybody thinks it's this finesse, draggy, slow type, da 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 da, -da type deal is waiting for a fish to come over and bite it. They're using really light weight. I want to increase my percentage and hit active fish, so I will go to a bowling ball. I want to stir up that bottom. I want to make noise and chaos. If somebody gave me a 3 8 ounce net head with tungsten and a screw lock, I would buy dang near every one of them because that would be a dynamite jig head so if anybody knows of any comment down there with a screw lock tungsten head and let me know where i can find that because i want to try it well i hope you guys take some of these tips i hope and i hope you guys whoever's watching all the way through this video learn something and can use it and apply it to catching deep water smallmouth and i hope it increases your catch rate for now till next time